Podcast Company. Please welcome Stephanie. I'm a little short, so we're going to have to bring this down. Um, thank you so much for the great introduction. Um, just to add on to a little bit of my background, I am also the go-to person in giving color and depth uh, to who our readers are across all of our platforms and sites. Um, within the last year, we've shifted our sales strategy into leaning into page six in New York Post Sports as their own verticals. Throughout our 200 years of history as a publication, we've realized that news can be polarizing. While we've built our name as a trusted source with our witty headlines that you can really only find at the Post, news at the end of the day is a hot button issue for most advertisers. We found that celebrity entertainment, whether we're talking about Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey, or Dune 2 with their premieres that are happening all weekend long with Zendaya's amazing, beautiful outfits, to sports um, with Super Bowl coverage that don't include any clips of Taylor Swift, um, to March Madness that is coming up. Uh, these are engaging pieces of content that advertisers, in turn, want to be around. When working with these two distinctly different audiences, we've had to kind of change our approach when creating content programs that would be successful and reach those who actually matter to our advertising partners. Now, let's dive a little deeper into what Page Six is. When we talk about Page Six, we always leave that it's a heritage brand that's been around for close to 50 years um, and is influential in the celebrity and entertainment news space. We're credited with inventing the modern gossip column. I'm sorry, it's not Gossip Girl, it was us. <laughs> um, and we always make sure to tell it as it is. Our writers have access with the ability to be at the parties, at the openings, speaking directly to celebrities on the red carpet, and fostering real relationships that where they feel comfortable enough to really spill the tea. Our voice is unrivaled. We speak to you like your good friend, where we're honest, confident, a little bit sassy, like myself. And these are reasons why our readers, celebrities, and real people alike seek us out, whether it's in the paper, online, video, or social. Now for sports. We are known as the best sports in town, especially when you're talking about New York sports teams. If you are a fan of the Yankees or the Mets, you are probably a daily reader of the Post. Um, our nationally renowned sports writers have a loyal following that are always interested in their insightful analysis, inside scoops, relationships with current and past players, and comprehensive coverage about the national leagues and our favorite teams. It would take a good amount of time to actually go through all of their accolades, but on and off the field, we give readers what they want, when they want it, and where they want it, whether it's in the paper, online, through our podcast, social, or video. Now, if you're picturing the audiences for Page Six and New York Post, I'm pretty sure you have two very different images in your mind right now. For our sports fans, I want you to think about your best guy friend, probably around their 30, 35 years old, um, with his favorite Yankees cap, every single week he's watching the game, he's texting his friends about every single play, and maybe checking his FanDuel account. For our entertainment enthusiasts, these women are around maybe 30 to 40, they just got done with a day of shopping on Fifth Avenue, their favorite department stores, and have grabbed dinner at an amazing restaurant with their friends, and is ready to spend the rest of their night with Real Housewives on repeat and with a glass of wine. And let's not forget about our general print reader. While our digital reach is national, a majority of our print audience is actually in the metro area. These are the people who are grabbing their New York Post paper, whether on their way to work or getting it delivered directly to their front door. They usually tend to share this paper with their family. Dad gets sports, mom gets news, page six goes to the teenage daughter that's sitting at the table. Now what does this mean when creating audience-based program for three distinct audiences? These three individuals engage with content in different ways from the location of the events they go to, who they bring with them, and the headlines that actually pique their interest enough to actually click, read, and watch. I'll be breaking down the ways that we've taken all this into account for our different programs. All right, virtual reality is one of my favorite Page Six podcasts. It is where our Page Six editors, Danny and Evan, discuss the latest reality TV show news with guests from all the Real Housewife franchises, Summer House, Winter House, Family Karma, there's so many to name. 
As you can see here in this video, it is a night filled with laughs and viral content. We decided that VRT would be the perfect girls' night out for all of our reality TV fans. When choosing a location, we're really looking for a sceny venue within the city that can provide drinks, food, and really make you feel like you have a front row seat to really good friends having a gossip session. Danny and Evan are known for having such close relationships with talent that they actually have them on speed dial. For Tri-State Cadillac, this was their ideal audience of women that had discretionary income and who would probably be in the market for a luxury car. They were our sponsor for all of our 2023 VRT events, which were timed around temples such as Valentine's Day, Mother's Day, where creating a theme was actually easy and seamless to weave in season premieres, finales, and reunions, things that people actually care about. This is such a special opportunity for advertisers where they get to interact with the audience through on-site branding, integration within the show, ownership of the corresponding content with articles posted online and social clips that are posted before, during and after the event. They also get branding within the full episode and the podcast. And I will tell you right now, we always wanna make sure that no one gets the scoop before us. So all of these things have to go out pretty fast. And usually by the end of the night, they are up on page6.com or any of our social handles. To really make this a fit for Cadillac, we made sure that we included activations where guests can actually inter interact with the latest vehicles, plus product integration within the video content itself. For our sports fans, we also went the route of taking our podcasts, which are centered around all of our New York sports teams, and making it into a live podcast event. What we've learned is that readers are just as excited to hear from our own experts as they are to hear from our special guests. Guests can be, include our MLB commissioner, as well as some other current and past players for certain teams. We've timed each of these tapings with major sporting events that are happening to make them relevant, such as the Subway Series, MLB Preview Weekend, drafts, playoffs, and even things as simple as game days. For example, we're talking about Cadillac again, a partner that has dual audiences that needed custom executions to reach both. When choosing locations for this event, it's completely different. We want to go where our sports fans are. Here we have an example of a New Jersey beer garden close to Hoboken that routinely draws in a game watching crowd. And if you're from Jersey, you might even recognize some of the pictures. Um, this is great for our hosts because they really can get into the before game predictions or after game analysis. While something like for the Subway series with the show, we've invited our friends to a theater in the Paley Center. Um, again, if you're from New York, you might know this uh, for a more elevated approach. Either way, if you build it, they'll come. As for VRT, advertisers have the ability to own a share of voice of the content, are tagged in social media posts, branding within the episode video, on-site branding, and truly have 360 ownership of this content. Now you must be wondering, this is great, but what if you have an advertiser that's really looking for your mass audience? Another unique opportunity for the post, and that you probably only see with the post, is that clients can actually leverage our iconic brand and front cover to promote their own key initiatives. Without having to actually make ticketed events, like we've seen with BRT, as well as our live sports podcast tapings, our cover-up activations are actually on the ground. We're tapping into high traffic pedestrian areas around New York, uh, whether we're talking about Bryant Park, um, Union Square, even in front of our building um, in Midtown. Um, we're also using this to actually tap into their own fandoms. Now, we're very particular in who we partner with and we really try to make it into a fun activation. What's special about these front covers is that they end up becoming collectibles. There is really only one run and very few places to actually get these within the city. Now, I will tell you that some of these covers have actually been on eBay, and they have gone for at least $40, um, which is amazing to always see. And also, since I work there, I've gotten one of my own, so I know later on, if needed be, I can sell them. <laughs> so this is an example of our activation with KISS. Uh, where we dressed up brand ambassadors as members of the band, uh, which, by the way, is extremely fun to do, um, handed out branded cookies and limited edition cover apps. Now, this in particular was a three-day event. So every day, we were in a new location, we had new branded cookies, and we also had a new limited edition cover app. And now when you're thinking, are people going to show up? 
they showed up. There were lines around the block just in anticipation of collecting one of these cover apps. Um, the band was actually involved and actually showed up at one of the locations that we were at. And I will tell you, I was the crowd control representative. I was <laughs> tasked with the idea of actually making sure everyone stayed orderly. And they are the nicest people I have ever met. I got words of affirmation as making sure that they were all orderly and in tune. And then once their idol showed up, I got lost in the crowd. <laughs> um, but all in all, it was such a fun experience, a great event, and we got so many thanks and appreciation from the KISS fans who said that they were really excited for their final tour and also to have a piece of history at this point. So, to recap our key learnings, location, you wanna go where your fans are. You wanna make sure the vibe that you're actually creating matches what they envision for themselves as a night out. Talent, you want to make sure you leverage internal and external talent and really maximize on the relationship that, there's, that they share. These are where the viral moments tend to happen. You know, when one real housewife is shading another housewife, that's where the magic is, and that's what really gets eyes on page6.com, also on all of our social media handles. Timing, you want to make sure you're leaning into major events such as holidays, television premieres, finales, Playoff games, album releases, book launches. I don't know if you know, but Drake actually released a book and we did a cover app for him as well, um, which was also a very fun thing to do. <laughs> um, anything that's memorable and easily can build a theme around. And content. Above all else, make sure that your content actually speaks to your audience. They're already consuming it. Uh, for a page six, we're known for our reality TV coverage. We're known for having the latest scoops on all celebrities. This is where they are, and for sports. People are reading our sports column, columnists all the time, and they're really looking for their insightful analysis and their opinions. Um, we also need to find ways of extending that past just articles online into a 360 content program. Social and video will be significant elements on actually sharing this content in new ways, having it last past a one-day event, and for advertisers to really own these marketable moments with their key audience and yours. And for us, that really means working really closely with our editorial team, our social team, our consumer marketing team, and even post studios to just really make sure that these events are hitting on all key points from everyone from talent to the audience to the advertiser, and just to really make sure that it is successful. Um, again, thank you so much. Um, for listening to me and also open to any questions. Thank you, Stephanie. <laughs> questions for Stephanie. How are you measuring performance on these, on these different campaigns for their advertisers? What kinds of guarantees, what kinds of set expectations were you setting for them up front? Um, and, and what were the, the key performance indicators for this, for them? Uh, for us, key performance indicators are definitely, since this is an audio podcast, definitely downloads and listens for the actual podcast episode itself. Um, any views for the videos that we are posting on YouTube and on site, and then also the views for any of the social clips that we are posting, which we take vertical clips from the actual full episode, which will include any branding for the advertiser, um, and then also just making sure that they're tagged within those social posts for extra added visibility. Um, let, and let me, let's go into some of the operational parts here. Mm -hmm. How much of this was being um, originated from your group, from your own group and brought to the client in advance? How much of it was collaboration along the way to decide on the key elements that really mattered here? Uh, so I would say 2023 was kind of an experimental year for us, especially with VRT. So we knew that there was an audience out there, and we knew that, especially for Post Studios and consumer marketing within the New York Post, that we had something special and that we really needed to actually kind of create something that we could optimize on it. Um, we had a great client in terms of Cadillac who really decided, hey, let's get together and kind of collaborate on what this could look like and what this could be. And for them, it was more of thinking of how can we make this work for them in terms of activations on their end with vehicles and ways that they are integrated seamlessly into it. While for us, it was thinking of how do we make that message come across in a way for our audience that they actually hear it. And for Cadillac, their whole tagline is be iconic. 
And now that's a really good tagline, especially when you're talking to reality TV stars. So we can actually take that and insert it into our content itself of trying to figure out, having our hosts ask reality TV stars, what's your most iconic moment for this season or things like that. So again, it's just a really seamless thing, but for the majority of it, it was us thinking, hey, we have something great here. We just need to find someone who would be willing to go with us on this ride of creating it. These are very high touch products that take a lot of time to develop. Give us a sense of the timeline of how long it took from beginning to end for these, and how many, as a group, can the studio handle in a given year? Because you have to calendar this properly, too. So I can tell you right now, for 2023, I believe we did about four to five different VRT events. That is the one that actually takes a lot more time to put on. Um, they do take about maybe three to four months because we are definitely looking for the perfect venue um, and building out that partnership and then also getting out that promotion across uh, to make sure that we are able to get the attendees that we're looking for, um, as well as the logistics of how do we get a vehicle activation there? How do we get the talent there? Um, Danny and Evan are great. They really do have Real Housewives on speed dial and they can call them up at any point to be like, hey, we have this really cool event. We want to speak about Valentine's Day. For that particular event, we actually had them bring their husbands, uh, which in itself was really amazing. And to be able to coordinate that of getting both people there is just amazing. That's a Danny and Evan thing for sure. Um, and then for sports, uh, it's actually a little bit shorter of a timeline. We can get that put together usually within two months because we're going to where our sports fans are, um, which is, again, a lot easier to kind of build that audience because it's already there. And a lot of these venues are definitely looking to work with us because we're bringing something that they don't normally have um, on their slate, which is uh, the MLB commissioner, our columnists, and people who are really interested in the sports team or league that we're talking about. Stephanie Kempadu, that was really cool stuff, thanks. Thank you.